All right, guys, hopping on here to do another quick Facebook Live. Um, I just saw a post. Uh, I usually do these when I see a post. Um, it just triggers something in me. So I saw a post. Uh, a good friend of mine actually was asking about uh, running comps and things like that for, for her real estate business. And um, it got me thinking about comps and uh, acquisition agents who run their own comps and and all that type of stuff. And it got me thinking about some sales management, a, a team that I trained um, on the East Coast uh, earlier in my career. And a, a big lesson I learned about sales and, and the same thing in insurance. I'll tell you both stories. Um, and you know what, I'm actually gonna tell you both stories first and then I'll tell you, uh, you'll see what the pattern is and I'll tell you exactly. So anyways, um, first story, insurance. One of the first sales jobs I ever had. Um, worked my way up to the ranks, became sales manager, um, had a team of about 50 after a year, and insurance agents would not, and I'm guessing it's the same today, uh, would not prospect for their own business. Um, they just wanted leads, leads, leads. And in most business-to-business -business sales, if you've never been in it, or, or most business-to-consumer, salespeople are in charge of finding their own leads. And that's actually what they spend most of their time doing instead of selling. So. Um, if they weren't selling, it was always because we don't have enough leads or the leads that we have are, they're just no good, right? So here's what we did. Uh, we produced, we had a telemarketer, we had a, a, we used telemarketers. We ended up building our whole big telemarketing uh, facility in Springfield, Missouri, but we produced a ton of leads. It was the early days of PPC. I mean, this was probably 15 years ago or so. And we started producing a ton of leads. And over about the next six or seven months, we had just a ton of leads. And of course, agents wanted more leads, better leads. You know, they'd always just shake their head, you know, no good, no good, no good, no good. If they didn't get a deal, they said it was the lead's fault, the lead is no good, right? So what we started doing is, um, and in order to, to get more leads, uh, they'd have to return the leads to us with notes. So we know they, they at least talk to these people, right? So what we did was after about six or seven months, I can't remember, uh, we took all the old bad leads, right? And um, we took all those old bad leads and we, we redistributed them to, to new agents and old agents. Just, hey, these are hot leads. We, we said, new lead source. Uh, we've never actually had leads like this before, which was the truth, right? New lead source, you're gonna love these. And we distributed the leads and guess what? And this was six or seven months later, after the lead came in. They freaking got sold. Uh, the, the agents went out, they had the right conversations, they closed the deals on the exact same leads they had previously written. Uh, they might not have gotten their own lead back, uh, it wasn't that organized, but somebody had previously written on that lead, hey, no good, they were reprinted, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but that's it, so that's story number one, right? The leads actually sold. I want you to think about why didn't they sell the first time? Why didn't they sell originally? Next story. A uh, company out on the East Coast. Uh, so we were training. It was a, um, I've had a few teams like this actually. Actually, I think this is a Midwest team. Uh, manufacturing plant. Um, this is, this is, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going off topic, but this is a, a team right down the road from me in, I believe, Stratford, Missouri. So it was a sales team. Uh, seasoned, grizzled vets. They'd been in the industry 20 to 40 years. They knew what they were doing. They talked the lingo. They knew everybody in every company. And, uh, and sales were flat and they were just like, you know, this is, this is all we got. This is, this is, we're getting all the business that, that we actually can. And, uh, and I came in there to do some sales training, which was, uh, obviously, you know, young buck at the time, um, like me coming in, I mean, these guys were 50, 60 years old and I was probably all of 35 or so. So I came in, they didn't listen to me. So I said, let's try something. Um, let's hire a new sales rep. And the CEO said, we don't need a new sales rep. And I said, just hear me out. Let's see if someone else can do better um, from outside the company, just so we know what the true ceiling is. So we hired a woman um, and we did not let that woman come into the office at all. She could not uh, talk to, she, she worked remotely. She could not talk to anyone else. Uh, any of the other sales team was, she was kind of on an island. Um, and what we did is uh, the guy's quota we took the guy's quota, and I think we like 4 x it. It was something crazy. But anyways, we told her, we go, hey, here's quota, here's what everybody hits. It's, you know, like X amount of dollars a month, so that's what we expected, those are, those are expectations. And, um, and guess what, she freaking killed it. Never been in the industry before, didn't know anybody, didn't know the jargon, but she killed it. 
course, later we introduced her to the team. Here's what she's doing. Here's her numbers. Um, they looked at everything from a new perspective. So I want you to now think about why that worked. Final story I tell you, I promise. Uh, you probably already heard about this story because uh, it's a famous story. It's a good story. Uh, but this also illustrates the same point I'm about to make. I'm going to tie this all together. Roger Bannister, first person to ever run a four-minute mile. Before that, it was thought to be impossible. Never happened. He runs a four-minute mile. After that, the record is broken like, like almost daily. Now, I'm making that up, but it, it was often. It was all the time. After that record broke once, and I, I want you to think about this. 2,000 years uh, plus of humans running around the earth, however long, right? And never a four, since we've been measuring, uh, so probably a few hundred years, never a four minute mile has been run that we've actually measured, right? So hundreds of years, one guy does it, then that year drops like five more times or seven more times or 13 more times uh, or something like that. So here's the point of all those stories. The only thing holding these people back from greatness was what was between their ears, right? What they thought the highest level was. Um, so in the insurance, you know, good lead or bad lead, you go into it thinking it's a bad lead, guess what you get? You get a bad lead. Um, in the manufacturing plant, uh, and they manufacture like steel uh, washers or something like that. But you think, hey, we are at the, we, we're at the ceiling, we can't sell anymore, guess what happens? You don't freaking sell anymore. If you don't think you can run a four minute mile, guess what happens? You don't run a freaking four minute mile, right? Only when people knew these things were possible, then stuff just started dropping like that, right? So, I wanna bring this full circle to my point. If I had a team of acquisition managers, and here's what, the, you know, I told you at the beginning of this post that what got, a thinking, uh, what got me thinking about this was acquisition managers and comps and stuff like that. If I had a team of acquisition managers, I would not have them run their own comps. I would want them to know nothing about the area, nothing about the property. I would just go in and say, hey, this is our, our maximum allowed offer, and uh, you know how to discount from that if the home needs repairs and things like that. Why would I do that? Well, looking around, seeing what other houses are selling for, looking at all that kind of stuff is just gonna get in between their ears, right? Um, I guarantee you could, you could go uh, take an acquisition agent, give them a, a maximum allowable offer uh, of one number, and if it's a good agent, they go through the right sales process they get their, they, and they close it, you probably could have given them a number five, 10 or 15% less and they still would have closed it if they thought that was maximum allowable offer. They'll always close at maximum allowable offer. Not because they're trying to do anything sneaky, not because they're lazy, not because anything like that. It's because it's what's in our heads. It, that, that's how powerful it is. So if I had acquisition agents, I would say, here's what we need to buy the house for, go do it. And that's it because anything else is just gonna, just gonna, it's just gonna get in the way, right? All you need to know anyways is what you can buy the house for. What this would also do is, is really change the dynamic of the conversation, right? The last thing in the world you wanna do in an appointment is talk about, here's how we come up with our number, here's, let's look at comps, let's take away this money, this is how much it's gonna take to fix it. The best acquisition agents out there, that conversation sounds like, Listen, yeah, of course you could get more money for the house. If you, you know, rehabbed it yourself and you cut the wood yourself and you sourced everything yourself and you spent the next six to 12 months rehabbing it yourself and then you listed it and you went through that process of open houses, yes, I guarantee 100% you'd make more money. Um, I'm not here to say that there's not other ways that, that, that you could get more money out of the house. What I'm here saying is this is the most I can pay for it. And then, you know, we're obviously gonna reframe and do those things. And you know, you mentioned pain, 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 pain. Is it worth getting rid of that pain to sell your house at this price point? And it changes the entire dynamic of the conversation. And it keeps the conversation away from going to, what's my house worth? What did the neighbor's house sell for? How much is it to get a crew to come out here and work? It changes that conversation. You don't want that conversation. You wanna solve personal problems, not, not debate what the cost of a house is. Right, does that make sense? All right, so I hope that helps. Don't let, don't let this stuff get in your, age, in, in your acquisition manager's ears because it could just slow them down. If you can find a way to force them to have a conversation of this is your problem and I can solve it by paying this much for your house and everything outside of that, everything outside of that world, I don't know what you can sell it for retail, I don't know what others will come in here and buy, but I can solve what you're trying to solve, right? 
I can get you out of this house. I can, you know, take you from where you are to where you want to be. And I can do it by giving you cash for this house. And this is exactly how much I can pay because let's face it, nothing else matters. It doesn't matter how you came up with that number. What you can pay is what you can pay, right? And if you start trying to justify it, again, this is not a conversation you want to have because that's not why you're there. You're there to buy a house. You're there to solve problems. You're there to help someone get from a situation there and now into a different situation that they want to be in. And whatever you can happen to pay for the house is whatever you can happen to pay for the house. So again, I'm going to dial, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I hear my kids upstairs. That's why I'm, I'm not in the office today. Um, it's bath time right now. So at my house, it is absolutely freaking nuts. It's chaos. So anyways, um, don't let information your acquisition managers don't need to know get in the way of them making sales because they're only going to perform at the level they think they can. Um, and maximum allowable offer is what they can perform up to. That's it. Keep comps away, keep everything away. I encourage you to do this actually. I encourage you to give this a shot. I encourage you to do, X, if you get one deal every 10 appointments then do 10 appointments, okay? and you give the maximum allowable offer to your acquisition agent. And you know what? Make it a little bit lower than what your maximum allowable offer usually is, right? And just let them know, hey, on this deal, this is our max. Uh, you know, do what you can, do your normal thing, that's our max, right? No comps, nothing, and just, I invite you to see what happens. Here's what I think will happen. What I think will happen is if you shave five or 10% off of each maximum allowable offer and say, that's our max, what I think is going to happen is they're still going to lock up the deals they would have locked up anyways, and now you just padded profits. This is bottom line profits by 5 or 10% with, with just that little simple way of removing uh, the trash, really, that's between our ears. Guys, I hope that helps if you are an investor buying houses. Um, oh, real quick, self-promotion. Uh, if you want your acquisition agents to get better or if you buy yourself and you want to get better at that actual process and have the right conversation about solving problems, um, we're going to do a 48-hour sale next week. It's going to start Monday at noon and go to Wednesday at noon for our boot camp. Um, we have 100 tickets. I'm, I think we might sell out uh, based on feedback and everything that we've had so far. Um, we have a spot on our website to reserve tickets and I think We've had maybe 50 or 60 people reserve and we haven't even done the 48 hour sale yet. Uh, but once we do that 48 hour sale, just hop on MidwestRev.com, um, get 500 bucks off your ticket, which is cool. Um, we're gonna do, uh, we give away this, this marketing video we did at one of our other boot camps where uh, Frank Kern and a bunch of REI heavyweights came in to kind of share their, their marketing secrets. Nothing was sold or anything like that. It's just like, hey, this is what we're doing and this is what's working. Um, really cool video. It's like six hours long, so it's a lot of good stuff in there. Even some stuff about raising private money. Uh, and uh, at no charge, uh, what I did is I rented out the, uh, a smaller conference room in the hotel. Uh, number one convention center in the U.S., by the way. Really cool place in Nashville. And um, what, we, what, what I'm doing is the, the, if you're the owner of the business, if you are in leadership role and you buy a ticket to the first two days, then the third day is on me. It's just for owners, and we're just gonna talk about stuff like this, right? Hiring salespeople, motivating them, coaching them up to higher levels. Uh, the different systems and processes outside of the sales conversation that we cover the first two days in the boot camp. Um, we are going to uh, talk about all those systems and processes. Scripting for follow-up, text messages, whatever. It's gonna be pretty open and free-flowing. Uh, I'm not gonna have a, a, it's not gonna be very structured. It's gonna be more mastermind-like uh, actually, no, it's not. It's going to be more of a round table where it's like, hey, let's get everything out on the floor that we want to chat about, that we want to, you know, um, that we need help with, that we want to do better. And we're going to talk through it all. I'll lead the conversations. I'll chime in. Other people will chime in on what they're doing, and that'll be it. Someone asked how much it is. Uh, it's three grand. Um, we take 500 bucks off for the 48 hour sale uh, for the two days. And then if you're the owner of the business, you, I, I cover the third day. For you. We always serve good lunches. I spent like tons. I think I spent like twenty or thirty thousand dollars. I think last time we spent thirty thousand dollars on just two lunches. So we feed you really well. Uh, I want it to be a good event. I want people to learn. I want it to be more of a workshop than like a. It's not one of those events where you like take notes and take notes. It's more interactive. Like we do stuff. Anyways, that's it. Wasn't here to plug the event. Here to you know. Uh, I'm happy to plug it though. Uh, <laughs> but anyways. Um, 
I hope that quick tip helps you with your acquisition agents. I hope you can get 10 or, or 5 or even 2% more on your bottom line because I know the business. It, it'll make a big difference. See you guys later. Have a good night.